we are going to take a look at three different areas that really affect and mess with the way that you function and the way that you feel in Gmail. The first area that we're going to talk about is going to be located right over here on the side. These are the labels. Labels really help you old organize things. They're, they work just like folders, only better. And so I'm going to show you how to manage and organize them, including that panel over here on the side. Then I'm also going to show you how to manage this whole area right here, where you can organize things in the way that you want, have them shrink or resize themselves. And then finally, I'm going to show you the cute part, which is show you the, how to change the themes. How, how is this going to look? How is this going to be different in the background? Those are the basic things that we're going to go over during this lesson. All right, so let's take a look at the easiest things first, which is how do we condense this down so there's not so much space in between each of the individual email slices here. So if I come up here to the settings, you probably have already noticed in some of the other videos or on your own that you have three different C letters to pick from. Comfy, cozy, or compact. Personally, I like compact. You pick it, you choose it, and everything condenses way down. But you may be more of a cozy person. You may be more of a comfy person. I don't really care. You pick whatever suits your needs and go with it. We're going to leave it right there on cozy. And now we're going to manage a few other things within Gmail by going to settings. Inbox is one of the quickest, easiest parts of settings. And it really can change the way that you look and function in your email on a regular basis. You have different inbox types. You can do the classic view, which is just as they come in, the most recent ones are on top followed by the older versions of those emails and those email threads. But you can also mark it so that all the important ones would rise to the top like cream. Then you can also say, well, you know what? I manage my email by my unread emails. Those, that's my to-do list. If it's, not, if it's unread, I haven't gotten to it yet, and that's the next thing that I need to do. You can also sort it by starred first or a priority inbox. The important and the priority are very similar, but they just use slightly different functions of Gmail uh, in order to put the first thing on top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the unread on top so you can take a look at it. And I'm going to go back now out to my inbox. And this is what it looks like now. You actually have everything split into two pieces. You have all of your unread mail here. You can even close that up by hitting this little arrow so it's all hidden. And then everything else, in other words, all the things that have been read already. But do you see these little yellow tabs right here? The yellow tabs actually have to do with the importance of the email. Sometimes Gmail will actually mark them itself, or you can mark it yourself as being important. If I go ahead and tick this, it's marked as important. Or if I star these, that's a different way to make it a priority item or an important item. So now when I come back into the settings here, I go back to inbox, I can tick all the starred ones first, so the first three starred ones would actually show up, or I can do all the important first, I'm going to pick that, hit save changes down at the bottom, and now you can see all of the important ones are at the very top, followed by everything else, including some of my unread items. So it's really your preference to figure out and pick which one best suits you and your needs. Let's just take a five second view at what else is in that inbox settings. So if I come back in here to inbox, right here in the menu, you'll notice that I actually have an inbox section. So I can customize this important things first here by actually saying, you know what, I don't want just two categories like we had on the outside where we have the important first, everything else later. I can actually customize my priority inbox and say, I want three or four different sections and each of these sections can be responsible for their own thing so I can say I want unread next so I have important first unread next followed by all of the starred items and then everything else and I can even say from within here each of these options I could say I only want to show five options from within the important or the unread and then I want it to be the next section so that each section doesn't get too long now we have down here the important markers Importance markers, just you have the option of turning it on, which by default it is, or you can say, I don't even want to use those things. I don't know what they mean. I am not sure how they function or they bother me. Turn them off. If you want to learn more about the markers and how they work, you can hit this play button over here and see how Google uses its analytical structures to determine whether or not something is important. I'll just give you a quick example, though. For instance, 
if any email is sent to me by people that I get emails from often, it marks it as important because it knows that those people are in contact with me a lot and therefore I must respect and use or respond to them quickly or with some sort of important message. And so it marks it as important for me. The very bottom one here is filtered mail. This isn't going to make a lot of sense until you learn how to filter, which we'll get to eventually in the later video, but you can override filters. Right now, it's set so that if there's a filter that says, hey, take and throw this in a spam folder, or hey, take this and put this in the follow-up folder or label or the miscellaneous label, it'll go there instead of into the one of these sections up here by default. If you want to override that option, you can click this right here. For now, I'm just going to cancel out of this, and we're going to move on to labels up here. I want you to see the label section right here where I can manage all of my labels and my circles. You'll notice I don't have a ton of labels in here necessarily. In my personal account, I have almost hundreds of labels, probably too many. In here, I just have the basics that are by default shown to you uh, or provided for you by Google. But you'll notice in tandem that I have a starred label here as well as right here because these are actually the same exact thing. This starred is this starred label. Important, important. And then I have drafts here, drafts is down here. So I think you get the picture is that these labels are actually also seen on the outside here in the label section. I'm going to leave the settings now and go back to my inbox and explain what labels actually are. In order to apply a label, you actually have to select something to label. In this case, you can do one of two different things. You could access your thread, your email, by clicking on it and then label it from within the actual email like this. So I'm in my email and I can come up here to this label button up at the top and I can apply the label of follow up. Once I click on follow up, I hit apply and you can see now I have the inbox label by default, but I also have my follow up label. At any given time, I can get rid of a second label or any label at all by just hitting the X right here next to the label section. Let me go back out to my inbox though. You'll now see that this email thread right here has been labeled with follow-up. It's also in my inbox, therefore it has an inbox label on it. So it's in my inbox folder essentially, but it's also in my follow-up folder. To prove that, let me show you. I'm gonna go over here to my follow-up label, which functions like a folder. Just as I promised, we landed here in the follow-up label slash folder. And you can see that because it's lit up in red, and a curious thing has happened up here in the search bar where it actually shows that I've used the search criteria of label colon. That means that I'm searching in the this label of follow up. And in here, there is only one single email, but you can also see the inbox label now at this time to see that it is not only in this folder, but it's in my inbox folder. Let me go back out to my inbox one more time here. I'm in the inbox and I'm going to show you now that we can label things even without accessing the email to begin with. So if I want to take this lucid chart email right here and label it, I can label it by coming up to the label button up here, just because I put a check mark there. Now I can put that in follow up as well, but I can also put that in the priority folder or label. I hit apply and it automatically puts follow up and priority as labels in there. I can even come up here to the labels and I could say, create a brand new label, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a label that now says HBAM. I create it, and now I'll, I have this in my inbox, it's in follow-up, it's in priority, and it's in eighth grade. This is an illustration of exactly why you might want to label things more than one label, or essentially put the same email in more than one place. I'm going to come into this now, though, and access this so that I can show you the all of these different labels are up here. I'm going to X out on the inbox, so no longer is it going to be in my inbox, and I can see that when I come back here, it's completely missing from my inbox. But if I come into my eighth grade folder, lo and behold, it should be sitting there waiting for me, just like the follow-up one did when I went into the follow-up folder. So here, I'll click on it. As I said, here's that email sitting in the eighth grade folder with the follow-up and the priority label already on it. Now there's a few more things about labels before we're finished, and they are as simple, but as sort of complicated as 
moving things from label to label. What in the world do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you. If I access this email, either by clicking on it or just by putting that check mark next to it, you'll realize there's this label folder, but much like in the introduction video, uh, you'll be pointed now to this folder called move. It's a little bit bizarre looking though in that it has just the labels in it that are in the label button right here, eighth grade follow up miscellaneous priority. So why do they have a move thing button that does the same thing as a label button? Well, really the only difference between the move button and the label button are this. You can easily move something to spam or trash in here. And whenever you move something in using the move button instead of the label button, Watch what happens. It automatically moves it to that folder and removes it from the inbox instantly. See that? That email is no longer in the inbox. I didn't even have to go in and click the X to turn the inbox label off. It just automatically takes it out of the inbox. So the move tool makes it easy to move out of the inbox and get rid of the inbox label as well as it makes it easy to put it in the spam or the trash folder. Otherwise the labels do exactly the same thing. So now let's go back into settings and take a quick look at how these labels can be managed from within there. And I also do want to quickly show you that this whole trick again where when I float over here it automatically opens up. You'll also notice that things that are in bold mean that there's an unread item and then the number following it tells you how many unread items are in there. Here in the labels you can manage any of the labels that you've already created including the fact that once they are created, you can decide to hide them from the list over here. So you'll notice that chats, for instance, does not show up in this list. That's because it's hidden. If I chose to show it, chats shows up over here. I'm going to rehide that, and I'm going to slide down here. And now I have a circles area. The circles area is only for people who use and participate in Google+. Google+, Plus uses circles where you can add friends, and family into different circles so that you can share or manage them. But at the bottom are the actual labels labels. That's this section down here. So I have my eighth grade, my follow-up, my miscellaneous, my priority. And now I can say show, hide, and now I have a third option. Show if unread. So in other words, follow-up, if I had clicked as show if unread, would still show up because there's an unread item in there. But if I click on the eighth grade one, eighth grade no longer shows up on the left-hand side because there are no unread items in that label. And now if I move over, I can say show in message list or actions, which is remove or edit something if I need to remove or edit it at any given time. If I move back up to the top, these are system labels, like I said. So you can't delete these like you can with these bottom labels, which is remove or edit, but you can actually hide them. So if you don't like them, just hide them. That is it in a nutshell for labels, organization, categorization, and making things fit your scope and fit your personality, except for there's one last place I want to take you, and this will only take about 20 seconds or so. You come up here to the settings cog. You can move down to the theme section. And this is where you can really personalize the look of your Gmail. And I'm not going to go through all these, but I think you get the idea. You can pick any of these different color themes, any of these different high definition themes, or you can actually go to the custom themes and you can start in the category of light or dark. You pick which one you go in here and there are hundreds and hundreds of different themes to pick from. Once you have chosen your theme, so for instance, I'll pick mountains here. Your preferences have been saved. It will automatically apply to the outside here. And now I have mountains as my saved setting. So when I come back to my inbox here, you can see there are the mountains in the background. And actually these mountains will change each day or each hour, depending on what the theme does or so. A lot of the themes will bother you. Some of them will, you will find extremely, not only aesthetically pleasing, but actually functionally pleasing where you can read labels and see things more easily. So play around in the themes, get used to those and enjoy your new organizational skills within Gmail.